Hello and welcome back to the Charleston Duck Race How-To Series. Today we're going to be going over the proper fill-out of the adoption form, which is a form that many of us are familiar with. However, it is a good refresher for some folks that haven't done a duck adoption or donation in the past year. Um, and it's also a good introduction for those new members that haven't uh, had a hand in the duck race in the past 17 years. Um, so for this particular example, I'll be using the Daniel Island Club form. There's no real difference to the other forms. Um, but in the top left, it will state which club is the responsible party for the donation or adoption. It also will put the net proceeds to benefit in the charities that they've selected for this year's Charleston Duck Race. Additionally, the, there will be a QR code for each club, and it will take you to the landing page associated with that club that's on the Charleston Duck Race website currently. It will also have the EIN number for tax purposes, um, and that will go with the participant uh, for the Duck Race. And then in the bottom uh, portion, it will have who to make the check out to if it's a check transaction. Um, so getting into uh, the ins and outs of the duck race adoption form, um, the top half above the perforated line located right here uh, will go with the adopter or the donator. Um, so that's their receipt. And uh, there's a couple of things on there that that are nice for them. Um, it, it states the, the time and location of the, the race. Uh, additionally, it has our EIN in there. So if they want to you know, show it as a charitable donation for a donation receipt, they can do so. And additionally, this year we added the QR code on there so that if they did want to adopt or donate some more to the do to the duck race, they could do so um, very easily um, by, by using the QR code that we're all familiar with now. So uh, getting into the proper fill out, the first thing that you're going to go ahead and fill out is the adopter's receipt half. Um, so if they are doing a straight donation, they will put zero in the ducks adopted, by, uh, ducks adopted for portion. Um, so it would be zero ducks in this portion. Uh, if they're purchasing uh, $10 uh, or if they're using $10 to adopt a duck, however, that you would put one in that, that column. So $10 per duck. So if they were to give you $100, um, you would put uh, 10 ducks adopted by. And then you're going to go ahead and put the adopter's name um, and the date that that was purchased. The next portion, uh, you'll put the amount received in this, this column right here as well as the Rotarian's initials. So if Jerry Bacon sells uh, 100 ducks um, and they are adopted, he would put his, ro his Rotarian initials as JB there. Um, so going on to the lower half below the perforated line, this is the line which you're going to rip the receipt and keep this portion. So um, going back to that example where someone spent $100 adopting ducks, you would put 10 ducks to be entered into the Charleston duck race. If they did a straight donation with no ducks adopted, you would put zero in this column. Uh, for purchase type, you check either adoption or donation. The big difference here is donation gets you no ducks in the race and adoption gets you ducks in the race. Uh, make sure you highlight that wave top for them. Um, another difference is the donation can be um, shown as a, a charitable donation um, and, and you know a tax write-off for, for tax season. Adoptions cannot because of South Carolina lottery compliance. Uh, for more questions on that, uh, please feel free to reach out anytime, and I'd be happy to answer any questions on that. Um, for the payment method, you're going to go ahead and select however they're going to be paying you, whether it's a donation or an adoption. Uh, if they give you cash, make sure to check the cash box and put the amount in the below section here. Uh, for checks as well, make sure that you're bouncing off of the bottom portion here and putting the proper fill out for Rotary Club of Daniel Island Foundation, or whatever the foundation may be going to, uh, North Charleston Breakfast, Mount Pleasant, et cetera. For credit card, if you're selecting the credit card method, uh, that means you're using a square reader. The reason that we have the last four digits here is so that we can verify when it comes into the little green light system that it did properly transact through, uh, through the square reader. So um, that's kind of a, a double check system. So make sure that you're getting that last four digits of the credit card there. Uh, it definitely helps the record keepers in the future uh, so they're not pulling their hair out. Um, next, you'll put the payment method, as I, as I mentioned earlier, you know, and the, the example was $100 worth of uh, adopted ducks. Um, you would put $100 in this payment method or payment amount location. And then next in the solicited buy column, you put the, the person that has either sold the ducks or um, a donation. So um, in my previous example, I used Jerry Bacon, so I'll use him again here. Uh, so credit Rotarian, you'd put Jerry Bacon right here. Then you're going to go ahead and fill out uh, contact information for the adopter or donator. Um, so you'll put their name, John Smith, um, their phone number, uh, 8675309, and their email address at the bottom here. 
Uh, if they don't want to give you one of the two uh, pieces of information, phone or email, um, just tell them that we need one way to contact them for the duck race uh, in case they do win $10,000 that day. Um, so uh, whether that's phone or email, the preference is definitely email because in the future we can use that for our marketing tools. Uh, we do have a MailChimp account that goes out to all previous donators and adopters to remind them that the duck race is coming out. And the first one should be going out February 21st. Um, and then in the bottom right, this is a new section uh, for this year. It was a uh, it was a refinement based on some feedback from our uh, our record keeping department. And uh, we had some you know issues in the past where uh, you know the cash may not have uh, matched up with the payment amount in the form portion. Uh, so we do have envelopes for that this year, as well as this bottom right section, so that the record keeper can show that they entered this into green light, and the ID number for that transaction is this. Um, for more information on that, make sure to look out for the how-to guide on how to use Little Green Light as a record keeper. And if there are any other suggestions on how to, uh, please feel free to reach out because I'd love to add more to this series because not only does it help the new folks coming into the club uh, learn more about the Charleston Duck Race, but it also helps me because over you know a year's time span, I may forget some small intricacies to the Charleston Duck Race. So I hope it's as helpful for, for y'all as it is for me. Thank you so much for joining us and I hope you have a wonderful day.